I think in, um, in my speech um, in the IRC or you know, the 50th anniversary period, I say that sees you in the next 50th anniversary. So I do expect there is a second 50th anniversary period. Um, so I think that when people still rely on rice as, as they do now, and I can see that rice will be required for the next and 100 years, air still has a role to play. I think Erie, we have to look at the, um, uh, the reality that the two biggest rice producing and consuming nation, China and India, are now advancing very fast in all fields, in the field of biotechnology, in the field of resource management. And I think that the challenge of ERI is really how to embrace those countries, how to embrace them as collaborators, and to identify what are our real, real advantage, real relative advantage in those two countries. They are now advancing in science, they are now advancing in economy. So I think that um, a, a careful um, uh, consideration of the balance between Erie, India, and China. What are our relative advantage are very important. So I think that that's the first thing that I, I, I can see. Uh, number two, I think that um, Erie relative advantage is still, I think, looking at the producing public goods, producing principles and big pictures that cannot be handled by the national systems. We have really identified issues that the national systems, either they don't have the capacity to tackle or they are not in the right position to tackle. Uh, resource management at a bigger scale, integration between germplasm and resource management is another example. Um, I don't see that area has the advantage going into too much downstream at the dissemination of extension, even though I don't say that's not important, but I think that they can be much more effective leaving it to the national system to do the dissemination and extension. We have them to do the principle. Um, so, so those are the issues that I think are important to ERI, important for ERI success in the future.